Okay, so in this example we have a trailer comprising of a mass spring system which is pulled along the road at some speed v. And we're given a little bit of information about the road profile, namely we're told that it's sinusoidal in nature and has an amplitude and wavelength profile as given. And we're given the somewhat uh, obscure fact at the beginning that adding some additional mass to the trailer creates a, a, some additional sag in the suspension. And what we want to find in this case is the vibration amplitude x and the critical speed at which the undamped oscillations of the trailer are greatest as it's pulled along the roadway. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to see if we can uh, solve this. And the way we're going to do that is, as we always do, we'll start by drawing a free by diagram for this system. So I need to define a couple coordinates here to help us out. So I'm going to define x to be the positive coordinate of the trailer and y to be, in this case, the positive uh, coordinate of the roadway. And if I do that, I can define the mass times acceleration upward of the trailer to be mx double dot. And in terms of forces over here, I'll have mg acting down, as well as uh, restoring force, assuming the uh, uh, trailer maintains contact with the ground of k times quantity x minus y. So if I have that uh, in hand, I can go ahead and sum forces now in the x direction using upward positive convention and set that equal to mx double dot. And what I'm going to get here is that minus mg minus k times quantity x minus y is going to equal, in this case, m times x double dot. And so I can rewrite this into standard form, and I'll have mx double dot plus k times x is equal to, in this case, I'll have minus mg plus k times y. Now I can use this to find uh, the static displacement of the system to start. So what I can do is in static case, I can go ahead and let x double dot equal 0. And I'll also set, consider the case here where y is equal to 0. And uh, if I do that, what I'll have is that k times x static is equal to minus mg. From this, of course, I can get the result that x static is going to equal, in this case, minus mg over k. Now, I'm also given a result here, and I'm told that if we add some mass, namely if I have k times x static prime, is going to result from when I have a mass now of m plus delta m, delta m being given in the problem statement, times g, which means that x static prime will equal minus quantity m plus delta m times g divided by k. Now, why is this useful? Well, if I know the sag that's created in my suspension by adding extra mass, that's equivalent to computing x static prime minus x static, which in this case, of course, is going to be minus quantity m plus delta m g divided by k minus x static, which in this case is minus a minus m g over k which of course is simply going to equal delta m times g divided by k. So from this, I can actually get the damping stiffness, or excuse me, not the damping stiffness, the stiffness of the suspension, k. Now, once I have the stiffness of the suspension, I can go back and try to find the amplitude of the vibration. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say that I let it coordinate z equal x minus x static. And if I do that, of course, noting that x static is constant, I'll get that z double dot is equal to x double dot. If I make these substitutions back into the equation of motion, I'm going to end up with the equation of motion mz double dot plus k times z is going to equal k times y. And in this case, I can try to develop a profile for the road y, and that's going to be k times the sine. And now I need to have the frequency, which in this case is going to be 2 pi divide by the wavelength L times V times T, where V, of course, is the speed at which I traverse this thing. So now that I have that, I can go ahead and solve for this particular solution. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to say, let Z be some unknown A times the cosine of omega T, where omega, again, is 2 pi V over L, plus B times the sine of omega T, and again, just to remind you, let me write over here, omega is equal to 2 pi v divided by L. And if I do that, I'll have z double dot is going to equal minus a omega squared times the cosine of omega t minus b omega squared times the sine of omega t. And if I take both of these and I substitute it in the equation of motion, I'm going to have m times minus a omega squared times the cosine of omega t minus b omega squared times the sine of omega t plus 
k times z, which is k times quantity a times the cosine of omega t plus b times the sine of omega t is going to equal k times the sine of omega t. And I can go ahead and equate uh, like coefficients here. So if I look at terms multiplying cosine omega t, I'll have minus m a omega squared plus k a is equal to zero, which of course gives me that a is equal to zero. And if I equate terms multiplying sine omega t, I'll have minus m b omega squared plus k times cap b is equal to, in this case, k times sine omega t. And actually, I need to back up here because I need to have a road amplitude profile too, and I should have put that in there. So let me just go back here and sneak in one term. I'm going to sneak in here a y naught, and uh, that's an important term to have. And that's going to come from the fact that y is going to be sinusoidal in nature with some amplitude y naught. And so I apologize for that brief omission. Let's go ahead and add that in. I'm not going to assume this is a unit amplitude, but rather a y naught amplitude. And so this will be a y naught as well. And so we'll have k y naught times sine of omega t. Okay, so get, sorry about that little typo. If we go ahead now and solve for capital B, I'll have capital B is going to be k times y naught. Actually, the sine of omega t shouldn't be here either. Sorry about that. I'm going to have k times y naught divided by quantity k minus m omega squared. And so if I go ahead and write down my solution, I'll have z as a function of t is going to be, in this case, k times y naught divided by k minus m omega squared times the sine of omega t. Where omega, again, is equal to 2 pi times v divided by the wavelength L. Now, if I want to find the critical speed for resonance, I know resonance is going to occur when omega is equal to omega n, which is equal to the square root of k over m. So in this case, this is going to be when 2 pi times v divided by L is equal to the square root of k over m. If I solve this for the critical speed v, I'll get that v crit is going to equal, in this case, L divided by 2 pi times the square root of k over m. And now we have the amplitude of the excitation, which is given by this equation b, as well as the critical speed, which you're not going to want to drive if you want that trailer to stay on the road. Best of luck, everyone, as you work to reproduce this.